back. Twice a week, and I've been doing this now for about 19 years, I have a personal trainer called Rachel, same personal trainer, who comes at 6.15 in the morning and we do an hour's, hour's workout. When I first met Karen, she had a back injury and I would say she's possibly fitter than she was 20 years ago, which is absolutely awesome. Where did my career in hospitality start? Waitressing in Betty's Tea Room in York. I loved looking after the customers. I loved the women I worked with. I thought they were fantastic. Their energy and ability to laugh off a crisis and deal with everybody in the proper time and make everybody feel welcomed and looked after was an inspiration and it's remained to, to this day. When I left university, I, I, I was offered a job in advertising as something called an account planner. I think after a year and a half, I realised very clearly that however big or small the enterprise that I ended up creating, and whether, whether it was a success or failure, I don't think really entered my thinking. It was just that I knew that I didn't want to be a cog in somebody else's wheel. However great that wheel was, uh, I actually wanted to be responsible for my own, the creation of my own thing. So my journey into work is varied because I'm not always going to the same place, as you know. So when I'm coming to Old Street, then I either cycle uh, to Clapham South, we live in Wandsworth, uh, or get my, my long-suffering husband to drive me if it's pouring with rain, to Clapham South and get on the much-loved uh, Northern Line and come to Old Street. I do try and use every minute of every day, I do. And, and I, I think perhaps that's also, I find that energising in itself. So from you know, what I do on the tube in the morning in terms of reading my emails, thinking about preparing for the day, it's, it's really useful time. I'm also a great believer that you don't need long meetings, but if you've got a particular issue you need to solve, working out what that is and bringing the right people in the room together uh, to try and solve it. And I guess that comes back to the teamship, just forming the team, saying this is what we need to solve and then just leaving them to solve it. You know, I think we are creating a highlight, uh, a highlight that will come as we we go through this journey together and, and, and create what we want perhaps to be in the future and achieve it. And boy, that's going to be some highlight. If we are a team, then we have to show that we care about the same things. And showing your caring by going to the places. I'm trying to get around, my, my personal mission is to visit every single one of our pretzels. Oh, okay. And Joey, no, no problems with supply chain? No, not here. Great, um, okay. Okay. Very organised. Very organised. Yeah, I'm proud of the kitchen. Cuisine. Yeah. They're really strong, so. Thanks, Norbert. Delicious. Do you think? Is it? Brilliant. Oh, it's Thank delicious. You. Thanks, love. That was absolutely that wonderful. Uh, yeah, that'd be great, actually. Thank you very much. So, yes, Prezzo is my absolutely my main focus now and hopefully for years to come. But I do do other things both within and without the hospitality space, which I think bring benefit. So in terms of in, in the hospitality space, I chair Hawksmoor, big steak and cocktail restaurant, opening in New York later this year. I chair Mowgli, Indian street food, started in Liverpool, now spreading throughout the UK. I uh, also chair a joint venture with Enterprise Inns um, for Frontier Pubs. I invest into small, smaller hospitality businesses, always have done. And then outside hospitality, um, I have the honour of being Chancellor of the University of East Anglia, which is wonderful, um, really love that. And I sit on the board of a big global food and flavours business, business to business business, called Firminish, which is based in Geneva, all very much involved in the future of food and where we're going with our food chain. So again, a lot of apl application and applicability for hospitality. There was an example a couple of weeks ago, we put an extra member, two members of staff on on a Saturday night for four hours and actually we got an extra four or five hundred pounds Fantastic worth of sales. Um, and we've Fantastic. got to talk about those successes. Yes we have. I, I think that's because, um, you know, our conversation about the second drink or another drink. Can yeah. I get you another cup of coffee? Can I get you another diet Pepsi? Can I get you another glass of soda in your mm. Which also brings in hospitality skills because you're noticing what people are drinking in the first place and that's lovely for people. Yeah that they've been treated as an individual. And that's one that we, that we 
are going to crack. I think as, as far as hospitality is concerned, it is a wonderful industry. I think there's a lot we can do to burnish it, to make it even better. And I think we just need to really think carefully about how we're going to stay relevant and how we're going to serve the next generation of consumers ever better. So where do you keep all your wine stuff? Oh, sure, sure. This is here, I have the wine. Sure. Everything what needs alcohol, it's here. Okay. So there's this separate from the soft drinks. Okay. So that's why. Yeah, we'll take them all. You know what, Adrian? I think there's a lot of stuff you can probably throw you away. Like throw it away. Yeah, though. Christmas decorations. Okay. Yeah. Have a good old clean out. It's going to be a very clear one, yeah. no problem, I promise. My, my husband, my three children, and my two cats, our two cats, are, yeah, they are the, the true haven at the end of the day, I think. And I hope that everybody has that, but going home is a time of great joy. This was uh, the picture of me and my mother sitting in Café Rouge in York, I think in about 1993 it probably was. Actually out of picture is my eldest daughter Rose. So there were three generations, me, please ignore the haircut, my wonderful mother who sadly no longer were with us, and then Rose. And it was wonderful. So happy Mother's Day. So my mother is a pretty incredible woman. She um, she always was able to balance uh, work and like her family pretty well, which I think now I've you know started working properly the last few years. I, I realise how hard that actually is in terms of the you know the work side and like um, intensity and, and uh, passion that she has. She's always been like a real big role model for me, and we've always gotten very well together. She's a, I love her. I love her. She's a great woman. And uh, I think that one of the reasons why I think it's such an important thing for uh, in our restaurants to welcome everybody warmly and to give a fond farewell is because I think that's how it should feel when you get home. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a, a great rest of mind and body. Mm -hmm.